I'm gonna clean the snow off my solar panels. Um, before I do this, the interesting story, I grew up in New England and a friend of mine actually buried himself alive cleaning this snow off his roof. I mean, this is like two inches of snow. He had like, you know, a foot or so and he was pulling it down with a broom and it fell, knocked him off his ladder. He got buried so deep, it took him like a half an hour to be able to work his hand down to his cell phone and then back up to his face to call 911. And the fire department came and dug him out. And thankfully he was all right. So, you know, be careful if you're gonna do this. A lot, a lot of people are asking me why I put them on the roof and it's just to make it harder for someone to steal them. We get ginseng poachers, they, they start way over at the main road and walk like miles through the woods and I just don't want someone to see an easy target and walk off with it. Hi, welcome to 50 Acres in the Cabin. If you're just joining us, this channel's about anything to do with cabins, land, being outside, construction, whatever, you name it. And this is the final series in a three-part series about my solar installation. So on the roof, I've got four panels, two strings of two. From there, the power goes into a combiner box, runs down to my charge controller, it's a Victron 30 amp controller and it's a MPPT. The controller drops the voltage to my battery voltage, which is 24 volts. My batteries are four Crown CR260s at, at 24 volts, which makes for 260 amp hours. From there, I've got an inverter, which can make AC power. That's a Kotec SD 1500 hardwire version, and it goes to an AC box and then out to my outlets. Or from the batteries, it goes to a DC distribution box and out to my lights and DC circuits. So the, the other way power can get into the system is from the generator. And so I've got a plug outside. Um, and don't make yourself a suicide cord. Get a recessed turn and lock plug. Um, don't, you don't want a cord with uh, prongs on both ends because you can electrocute yourself or someone else. Um, so, so power comes from the generator. It goes through into a sub panel. And from there, it either goes to my IOTA battery charger or to the inverter, which has an automatic transfer switch. The inverter senses power, it'll stop making power, and it'll pass the power through to my AC distribution. So it's a, it's a cloudy, overcast day, and um, it's nice to have a system that's a little bit oversized because you basically just sip off the top of your batteries, and if you've got lead-acid batteries, um, just drawing them down like 10, 20% you're gonna get a lot of cycles out of them and for example when I have my inverter on that draws 30 watts on on idle um, my furnace draws 36 and then say I want a couple LED lights I've got about 80 watts that I'm drawing and even on a cloudy day like today I'll usually get between 40 and 70 watts so I can almost refill especially if I don't use a lot of power, I can almost refill my battery on a cloudy day like this. I've got a battery monitoring system, which everything that goes into or out of the batteries runs through a shunt, which measures the current. If you're thinking about putting together a system, I would definitely invest in one of those. Without something like that, it's kind of like driving an old car where the fuel gauge is out. You'll be okay most of the time, but you, you might end up on the side of the road out of gas. And when you do that to your solar, it's not so good on your batteries. So the, the overall philosophy of this cabin is to use DC as much as I can so that I don't lose any efficiency converting to AC, which for my inverter is about 10% loss. Okay, let's talk about what you can run on my system. I've got about three kilowatts of capacity at 50%. And to put that in perspective, my monthly power bill at my house is, is usually about 400 kilowatts. So you, you definitely don't want to go putting normal uh, household appliances in the cabin like this because you're gonna your system is gonna be huge and really expensive. Building a system, like a lot of people do that and that's fine if you have the money. This system is larger than I need. Basically, I just designed it to a certain cost. I wanted to spend 2,000 bucks, so I ended up spending 3,000 on it. <laughs> 
Whoops. Okay, let's let's talk about the system voltage. My philosophy is that you should go as high a voltage as is practicable. And kind of a rough guideline for that is if you've got an RV or if you've got a system that's already 12 volts, or maybe you're gonna have a one battery, one panel system, then sure, go 12 volts. But otherwise, I would seriously consider going 24 or 48 volts. I've gotten 24 volts, and for me, that's the best of both worlds. I can run DC stuff. Yeah, I can get 24 volt bulbs, 24 volt appliances. And the reason to do that, let's just do a quick math problem here and I'll demonstrate why. Let's say that I want to get 240 watts over to my bedroom, which is 25 feet by the time I snake through the walls to the other side of the cabin. Well, 240 watts is 10 amps at 24 volts. And at 12 volts, it's 20 amps. Um, let's look at a voltage calculator and see the difference in wire size it's gonna take 10 gauge wire to move that power at 24 volts. Now, the same power to get it to my bedroom at 12 volts is gonna take four gauge wire to keep the voltage drop under 3%. That's a big difference. And that, that's just for one uh, example. Think about that multiplied across everything in your cabin, your inverter cables, you're going to save a ton of money and your system's going to be a lot more efficient if you step to 24 or 48 volts. And then for 48 volts, I think if, you're, if you've got four batteries, a system bigger than mine, I would even consider going 48 volts, especially if you're going to be inverting all your power. That's going to be your most efficient inverter. You're going to spend the least amount of money on wire. And, and, and you definitely don't want to buy a massive 12 volt inverter. You can step down voltage if you want to run 12 volt appliances or 12 volt lights you can you can buy a voltage stepper and it'll just you can just run everything off of your 48 volt system even 12 volt or 24 volt stuff so i'm going to put amazon links to most of this stuff that i bought but i didn't buy this stuff on amazon i actually bought it from northern arizona wind and sun the reason to buy from a, a solar company is that the pricing is usually the same or better and they'll also you know answer the phone and if you have a problem putting it together They'll have people that'll help you out. I've also bought a lot of this stuff on specs. So, you know, make sure you keep in touch with my channel because if something breaks, I won't hold back on it. I'll definitely let you guys know that it, it broke and I wouldn't buy it again. Okay, thanks for watching. And the next video I'm gonna release is uh, installing a 24 volt RV propane direct vent furnace um, as backup heat. So keep a lookout for that video.